I'm really looking forward to this conversation with Pamela with Miss Peabody's Tea, Southern Tea and Cakes, I believe is the full name, but she'll tell us all about it. Uh, so I'll let people jump on and give us a wave. Nice to see you here. Um, fun conversation today and this week has been all about the success equation and having a compelling why, the thing that's going to strengthen your commitment and help you have the courage to do hard things and to take action. And Pamela embodies that in spades. So really excited to talk with her. I'm Sari Kimball. I am the creator of Food Business Success and I help package food businesses, um, entrepreneurs just like yourself who have an idea, who um, have a product that they wanna grow and take to the next level. So I really work with early stage entrepreneurs and I absolutely love it. And um, be sure to head over and join our free private Facebook group, the Food Business Success Facebook group. Um, lots of good stuff happening over there as well. All right, so it looks like um, Pamela is ready to come on. So I am going to let her in. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. I'm doing well. Nice to see you. I was trying to make sure this was going to go right. I was like, just want to make sure. <laughs> you did. Right, you did it perfect. I know. I know you're a little nervous, but you're doing yes. it. It's going to be okay. so fun. Um, okay. So welcome, Pamela, and um, we'll just start out by you just we're just having a fun conversation here so tell us about miss peabody's what is it how did you get started when did you get started start well miss peabody's is a southern a bakery that specializes in southern desserts and southern eats and treats how i got started which is probably the best thing about it was um i was let go from a job and at that time every I didn't want to be at the job anyway, but at the same time, you want to call your, you want to leave when you want to leave. Yeah. So I was, I was in my feelings about that. And so I did what most people did. I started watching um, the great British baking show. Yeah. I was binging on that show. And when I was watching that show, they kept talking about like food that their grandmothers made or food that they grew up eating. And it just made me think about like, what did I grow up eating? What what would be the food that I grew up eating? And it was tea cakes. Yeah. My mother's from Louisiana. And for, in Louisiana, you got tea, everybody made tea cakes. They sell them at gas stations. They gave them to you before you went to church. Even when we would travel from Denver back to Louisiana, my grandmother always had a shoebox full of, of, of tea cakes. So my memories of being here in Denver as well as spending time in Louisiana was always tea cakes. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to start making tea cakes. And so I started, I got my grandmother's recipe and I started making the tea cakes and I had people try them out and they liked them. So I set a goal for myself. I said, okay, if I, this was in February of 20, 2017. Okay. 2018. I said 2018 because I met you. In yeah, I said, I said, okay, I'm going to see if I can sell 25 dozen tea cakes to at least 25 people. And I ended up selling 35 dozen tea cakes to like 22 people. So that was basically how I got started. I got started sub just trying it out, watching the Great British Baking Show, wanting that family connection. Yeah. People like them. And I started the business. I did everything legally in June of 2018. And then I added pies like in September of 2018. And every year I tend to add a little bit more. I, I started doing Palisade Peach Cobblers, mm. doing Palisade, like right now, this is peach season. Yeah. Um, so I just started adding different things, but I specialize in Southern sugar desserts that make people feel good, that remind them of their family, yeah. of their memory. So that's how I got started. Awesome. What is a, explain what a tea cake is for those of us who maybe don't. Okay, I a know. tea cake is kind of, it's like a cookie, a scone, and a biscuit. It's not, a, it's not as dry okay. as a biscuit. It's not as dense as, as a scone. And it's shaped more like a like you know, my grandmother would use like a a, a jar. Okay. To cut okay. out. Okay. It's like a cookie in a sense, but that's not what they're called. And they have 
they don't have as many ingredients as a cookie would have. Yeah. Because right. you can make them, you know, few ingredients in your home. So anybody can kind of make right, them. Right, right. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And then you added all the, the fun pies and you're not, you're still, you're not doing any meat pies or anything. They're all sweet, right? They're all sweet pies. I, do, I, I specialize in desserts. I've been asked about doing savory pies and I think I'm just going to stay in my lane. I, I like the desserts. I can always add different desserts and there's so many Southern desserts yeah. that you can add, you know, you can make. So I'm going to stay in my lane and only do the desserts. Yeah. I love it. Um, I think it's good at, yeah, when you add meat, it's a whole other USDA gets all the yep. way out there. So you started working out of a commercial kitchen then in June of 18? Or were you yeah. in the cottage Yeah. Yeah. I, um, there was a program. First of all, I believe that this my business for me, anyway, I feel like it was a God-led business because while it has been challenging, it hasn't been like so difficult that I can't do it. Yeah. So what happened, I, 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 someone, I used to be, I was in a program called for Rocky Mountain Microfinance. Mm -hmm. And one of the gentlemen there sent me a flyer about a program that they were having at um, Emily Griffith. It was a six week program. And at the end of the six weeks program, you could pitch your idea. So I did the program and, and I pitched my idea and I, I was able to get $3,000. And that's how I got the commercial kitchen. That was how I got all my licensing. That's how I got my insurance, um, a few labels, things like that. But that that initial seed money is how I got into my first commercial kitchen yeah. back in yeah. June of 18. And then you joined. So I met you, um, and you're based here in Denver, where I'm at. And uh, I met you through Sistapreneurs, and I came and spoke a couple times for your group. So was that a year? That was a year long program, right? Um, that was a year long program. Um, but prior to that, I I had done. I was a boot camper of Rocky Mountain Market Finals. I had done their program like 12 years, 11 years ago at that time, and I had a different business. Okay. And I even had another business before Miss Peabody's. What I had a business where I wanted to, because I grew up in Five Points. Okay. And I had these ideas from London, I guess. And I wanted to do, I was in London, and they had these tours called Black Walks. And with these tours, they were doing the same tours, but they were giving you a perspective from black people, from, you know, in, indigenous oh, people cool. from London. So I thought, oh, I'm going to do tours of Five Points. Because five points definitely has changed. Yeah. And then um, I came to a point where I had two businesses, two business ideas, and I was talking to a mentor, and he's like, no, do what you have money for. And that's how I went on into to um, Miss Peabody's. But, yes, I've done Rocky Mountain Microfinance. I have done Sister Biz, did a year-long program there with um, seven other black women. We all have businesses. There's only two of us that have food businesses, but we all went to this program together and in fact we're going to get together this coming saturday oh, and have drinks and catch up and so i'm excited about that but i've done quite a you know different programs um i take advantage of all the opportunities and that denver has to offer for small businesses um i try to network i try to stay involved try to take classes just try to do as much as i can that time you know, with the time that permits me to do that there's a lot of things that go on and Darren met you. I can't wait to work with you. So there's yeah. just staying involved and trying to stay abreast of all that. COVID's kind of tweaked it a little bit, but it's really nice to be able to, there's quite a few programs in Denver or classes that you can take that can help make you a better, stronger entrepreneur. We're, we're in a good space, I yeah. think. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think kudos to you. That is definitely one thing I have noticed about you is that you are great at taking advantage of all the resources that you can get your hands on and why not right like yeah i know that they can be time consuming but sometimes the benefits are, are huge you know and getting that startup yes. capital or just support and meeting people like my like me or, you know you're just building your, yeah. your network out so that's really great you never you never know who can help you you never know and i have benefited from the things that i've done i met people that can help me get lower cost of things you know yeah, yeah. Information about things. so you just it just pays to i mean it is time consuming but that's also part of the time that i allot from my business is to do networking to do is that. to do yeah that. for sure yeah you just never know you just never yeah. know i don't know everything you know so it's good to meet the people that can help meet yeah. the right next person you know 
So I was um, I was out live inside the Food Business Success Facebook group today before this, and what I was talking about was um, the what I call the success equation, which I, I emailed you so you were prepared. But um, I spoke about desire, right? And obviously, your desire is is a ten, right, <laughs> to create this business. You have a lot of passion for it, and you have a strong belief. Um, but what do you think the other piece of that is commitment? And I find that people say like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm committed. But then when you like really press, like, well, are you, you know, are you willing to put the money out? Are you willing to put the time? Are you willing to do the risky things that, that feel really scary? But, you know, you mentioned, you even brought it up earlier that you felt like this is a God led business. So what is, what is your compelling reason? Like what? What helps you get past all of that fear and the stuff that comes up for, you know, the doubt and can I really do this and figuring out the money Ooh. stuff? What, what do you think is really driving you to, for, you know, your vision of success? I think, I think about this all the time because it, I think running, the, running a business next to being a mother has been the hardest thing that I've ever done. And with both of those scenarios, I think it's perseverance. You have to be willing to persevere as a business owner. Yeah. And I, I always feel like there's something better and I just got to keep plugging at it, keep plugging at it because there's, there's going to be something better. Yeah. If I just keep working at it, I'm going to get that next opportunity. But if I quit or I stop, I'll never know what I could have done. Um, I had my biggest order last week. I had to make 500 packages of tea cakes, which equates to a thousand tea cakes. Oh my God. For, um, Ibotta. Ibotta, um, ordered 500 packages of tea cakes. Awesome. And that was from networking. So now that I've done that, I want to do that again. Yeah. And there's always something else that I believe will happen, but I'll never know if I quit, if I don't do it, I'll never know what this business could be if I don't keep moving forward, if I don't keep plugging away at it, if I don't keep trying to grow, if I don't, if I don't try to make things different, like I need to hire someone, I need to do different things, but I just, I just want to know what's going to happen. If I plug away, if I keep doing it, like, could I be Mrs. Fields? You know, could I be yeah. the Mrs. Fields? of tea cakes. I won't know if I don't keep doing it. I won't know if I don't keep meeting the hurdles. If I don't, if I just stop or I give up, I'll never know. And I'm not a quitter and I'm very curious. And I just really want to know how far could I take this if I keep doing this? Like how far could it go? And I get a little I want emotional to know. hearing you say that. I, I love that. Like, I want to know. You're willing to like face your fears and get over yourself and be vulnerable because you're so like you're just like I want to grow as a person. And I want to keep getting better and I want to see what's on what's next. I want to know. I want to know. I don't know. I'll never know if I don't know. And I really truly just want to know what I could do with this business if I just set my mind to it and I just keep. You know, I, th I think about like all these companies like Walmart or Target or Panera, all these companies, and they all started with someone like me, mm -hmm. you know, oh, and, really? oh, and they're like name brand companies now. I want to I want to see if I can do that. Oh, I love that. I want to see if I can do that. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I talk about is that um, Grant Cardone is a sales sales guy, but he he talks about that you have to 10x your your goal in order for you to generate enough momentum to get over yourself and have the courage. And I love your your big goal. If you don't mind sharing it um, about Frontier, I love it. Like I love like this. I, I think is what fuels you yes. to do the little things, right? To do the little hard things that seem insignificant. I would love to see my tea cakes in airlines in air when when you're flying off and they're serving you know a dessert or serving you some coffee, you get a package of my tea cakes. 
that would just set my soul on fire. I mean, I can't tell you how excited I would be to see my product on 50 flights a day all throughout DIA. Right. Forget, forget peanuts, forget pretzels, forget Miss Peabody's Southern tea cakes. That would just like, yeah, I mean like, but you can dream when you're a business owner, like the dreams are like limitless. You can dream. And I'm, you know, I am a dreamer and I, I just, I just can't wait to see what happens. I can't wait to keep working toward that. Now I made 500 tea cakes, to, you know, a thousand packages. I don't know. Maybe I can do 2000 the next time. Maybe I can start getting, I can get a co-packer and, you know, but that gets me one step closer to frontier and to yeah. nine and to Delta. It gets me one step closer because now I know I can do a large volume. Yeah. I know that for a fact because right. I just did a large volume. So it's just one step closer. I learn what to do. I learn how to make it go faster. I learn how to time manage. I did have help. I had a family members and friends that helped me, Good. but being able to manage them being able to organize the kitchen, being able to say, okay, we're going to do this first, then we're going to do this, then we're going to do that. You know, just getting it all together. I learned some things as, as I went along. So the next time that I, ha I have another order next week of the same amount next week, okay. now I know what to do. Now I know how oh, to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I love I like that. that. I, I think being curious is so important, too. You said that before, like, Mm -hmm. Not being like, I know it all, I know how to do it all, I got this, but just like, hmm, could I do 500? Could I? <laughs> Let's figure it out. I'm very curious. Yeah. I'm very curious. I just, I think that when you're a business owner, and maybe you can attest to this too, you, you don't stop being who you are because you own a business. So whatever you are in your everyday regular life, you're bringing that to your business. So I've done a lot of work on myself to be able to be a business owner. I've had to check myself, you know, because um, my business is like my baby. So when someone gives me suggestions about my baby, and I like, you know, no. But I've learned now that when, when I hear things or I have to make a decision, I ask myself, is this decision about the business or is it about you? Mm. If it's about me, yeah. then it's not part of the business. So I do whatever is best for the business. But sometimes as an owner, you can get in the way of what's best for your business. So I'm, I've learned, like, don't just say no, you know, stop and think about it. Is this best for the business? Mm -hmm. An example would be someone asked me to change the color. I have an old shirt, but the color is gold. And she said, we well, should make it red. And I'm like, oh, no, I designed that. And I like it the way it is, <laughs> you know. But then when I saw it again, I'm like, that's my ego. That's my, you know, my stuff. Let's change it to red. Hmm. So now everything that normally would have this gold is now red. Everything has been revamped to do the red. But if I had a, just stuck with what I wanted, yeah. I wouldn't have done that. So I worked really hard. And I'm sure you do too on trying to do what's best for the business, even if it's not this is what's best for you. Right. You know, right. I think it's because otherwise I would make a lot more mistakes. I would not take chances. I would not do certain things because I'm very cautious in my own space. So I can't always be cautious in my business. I have to like step out on faith many times to see what can happen. So tell me about, thank you for that, so great. Um, tell me about, so you were kind of cranking along, I think you had some wholesale accounts and things, thank and then and then COVID hit. And I, again, I think you do, you're such a great example of like, you are gonna make this happen. Like, I have no doubt you will be on airplane, <laughs> airline. Like, there is a, a shred of doubt in my mind because you will keep finding people, you will keep sharing your dream, you have a big enough goal that it is fueling you. But, um, you know, then we have like COVID hit and and you like, you didn't just give up. I mean, you, you pivoted. So tell us about what you did, or what you've done over the last few months. Well, Ooh. as you know, COVID came out of nowhere. And I had spent a lot of time after I had met with you at Sister Biz on creating a wholesale plan 
Yeah. I had a wholesale plan that I was going to implement. You know, so many, because I, I wanted to be in coffee shops and tea shops with so many each month. And I, and I, I was working on that plan. I, I was getting ready to be in, I was already in two shops, but I had two more that I was getting ready to go into. And then COVID hit and everything just shut down. And um, I really didn't have any idea of what I was going to do. Honestly, I didn't have any idea. But what I did glean from COVID, especially initially, I took that as a time to kind of be still and to kind of look at my business and do the things that I hadn't been able to do before, like, you know, haven't didn't have the time to do before and able to think of some things differently and what would I have wanted to do. Um, so what I had, what I came, what, how I pivoted was I created a Miss Peabody sweet box. And, and what I did with the sweet box, I always wanted to collaborate with other female bakers, always, always. Because, you know, it, being in a commercial kitchen, you get around a lot of bakers, a lot of different people, and you learn things. So one of the things that I wanted to do in my business always is collaborate with other female entrepreneurs, especially women. But, you know, more so women. I deal with men, too, but especially women. And so I came up with the idea for a sweet box. And a sweet box would contain six products, um, five of which would be my own products. And then I would collaborate with another female baker. And that baker would have one item in the box. Mm. So I've been doing the sweet box since June. Um, I sold out in June. I've been steady ever since. I think June was just kind of like a flake, like a fluky kind of month. People were like, yeah. Social buying causes, black businesses, that was happening a lot in June. And I don't think that it's definitely waned, but it was really, really big in June. So, um, but I always have a female baker. So the first month I had Jessica Berry, who was from Bosco Baking um, Company. The next month I had Tree, um, Tia, who does patty bakes. And then this month I have um, little vegan cakes from Angie's Vegan um, Cake Business. So each, and as I do the boxes, I'll always have another female baker that puts their product in the boxes. And the boxes are doing well. I'm not doing what I did in, in June. But I just figured June was just the fluke. That was just the fluke. But they are doing well. Like I can see them going into corporations, um, mm -hmm. maybe making them smaller where people can buy maybe just two or three items. Um, but they are doing well. And then it allows me to be more creative. It allows me to try out new recipes and new products that if people oh, like them really? enough, and I can put those products on my regular product line. You know, yeah. so everything changes. Um, I think I'm going to have a theme for um, um, September's box, more of them um, like a breakfast box. So most of the things would be like coffee cakes, scones, things like that that you can have for breakfast, yeah. sweet dishes, like that. But that's how I pivoted. Um, I have another pivot that I didn't do yet because of it's summer and it's hot. But I also want to do where people can buy... And I'm going to launch that probably in October, a take and bake pie, mm. where I provide the pie dough, I provide the mix, and I provide the pie pan, and you make that pie at your own leisure. Yeah. yeah. Well. So, cause people, are, people are staying home. I, I feel like I try to follow what's happening in the world to a certain extent, and I think people are, are, are going to be home. Even once we get kind of past this COVID stuff, people are still going to be home yeah. and people are going to want to cook and do things at home and i feel like people would want to make pies at home and so they can i can cook everything and they can make it themselves and they could say it they can say it's theirs you know i don't you know they yeah. can say that they well, know it. I'm you know <laughs> yeah i know we so, want to work together on that project so that yeah really but that, that that's what i did I, but because i had time to think about it that i wouldn't have had time yeah. in the throes of running the business. So for, so for me, COVID has been a blessing in a sense because I had to stop and think. I had to yeah. get my finances in order. I was able to create forms. I was able to do processes, some things that I hadn't had a chance to do before and just be able to think. And so it's been a good thing, but the boxes are doing well. And that, that was my pivot. And 
I'm you're glad I did. I'm glad I did. Ma'am, is that right? You delivered. I never did. Yes. So I, I never delivered. I delivered um, in Denver and then metropolitan areas around Denver. Um, I delivered. You have to order a certain amount for me to deliver, but I do. The, actually, I don't deliver. I have someone else. I did delegate my delivery. Yay! <laughs> I can't make it deliver. Yeah. But I have someone else that delivers for me, um, and that that goes that that goes pretty well. I, I you know I've delivered as far as one time I had like ten boxes up in Evergreen, and they were all like waiting for me at the at the park and ride. It was so it was so cool. Oh, they were like oh I feel like I'm famous. It was so cool. Oh, but yeah, I do deliver. I deliver all my products and in boxes. I still make pies. I still make tea cakes. Um, and I will deliver, or people can pick them up at the kitchen. But yeah, I, I you know, that because that's the big thing now is delivery. Yeah. Who people want to have access to it. So I do deliver. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you're not the only one I've heard that from that, you know, that time where we kind of had to stay at home and couldn't leave. Like, it was a blessing for many food, food mm -hmm. businesses, especially existing businesses, I found, where they, People were coming to me and were like, I want to revamp my labels. I want to do a new sell sheet. Let's like redo my, you know, let's work on the pricing and the business plan. Like, let's do the fundamentals that, that yeah, you get so overwhelmed with just the barely keeping up with production. And yep. so that, it, it can be a good, it was a good for many people who took advantage of it. <laughs> yeah. And I know people that, you know, um, had a hard time. Or, or maybe are still having a hard time, but I kind of like the solitude. You know, I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I was able to like just think and kind of yeah. be still yeah. because summer is my busiest time of the year because I do a lot of events. Yeah, doing do. a lot of festivals and you know like Juneteenth, the Black Arts Festival, Pride. And last year I had the most successful summer that I'd ever had with all these festivals. I think that's how I've kind of got branded. Yeah. Um, and then also I was at Tea Lees. I was at, you know, Baker Neighborhood Market. So I was trying to, I was trying to get in down at the Pig and Whistle down at the Tabor Center. I was scheduled to take her some treats down there and everything went, you know. Yeah. So I haven't given up on wholesale. Um, I think I'll wait and see what next year. But I think what I, what I really want to do now is get more into corporate. Yeah, this Ibotta account I is awesome. I can get my luck. You know, I can get more instead of making... 10 packages, I can make 500 packages. Yeah. You know, do it like that. So it. it also kind of like changed my business model in mm -hmm. a sense. When everything happened, I had to kind of like change my business model. And I think as a business owner, I think it's important to stay on, the, on your tippy toes in a sense so that you can turn. Right. You have to turn. Yeah. And you can't, you can't be, COVID has taught me you can't be so married to an idea or to a way of being that you can't change. You can't go left when you should go right. You can't, that's something that, that I've learned from COVID, like kind of just being more, a little, little bit more flexible yeah. and just being like, I don't, everything, I don't, like something is shiny. I don't know, like, oh, that's shiny, but I do think about things and like, maybe I could do that. I never thought about that before. I never thought about corporations before. I would have never gotten involved with Ibotta prior to that, you know, because that wasn't on my radar. Now it's on my radar. Now it gets me closer to frontier. So now I really can think like, okay, how can I get involved with more corporations? What do I need to do? How do I, how do I do that now? Where I wouldn't have been doing that then, I would have thought that that was so much further off. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's way down the line. I got to do That's way down the line. I mean, it is down the line, but it's not like way down the line. Hey, you know, now, yeah, like, now you I have one. Now you, just, you know, now I can kind of see it. Yeah. And I think you'll be more willing to keep trying those big, like the next big thing, you know, like what, what's a crazy, I call them worthy fails, right? Like what's a crazy thing? For, could you call up Google and Boulder and be like, hey, I can make, you know, make your employees these great boxes or, you know, you, you might be more willing to like do some crazy stuff and be like, who I knows? Am. Like, what's the worst that can happen? They say no. <laughs> All they can do is say no, or they can tell me they need two thousand, and I'm then I'm gonna start calling every family member that I can. <laughs> when you make that, tell you what you earned that day. Please come help me. Yeah. Please come. Help. Please help me make this happen. Kind of thing, you know. Um, 
And that is something that I plan on doing is hitting up some of these larger companies and saying, you know, I did this for this company. Because what's happening now are a lot of companies have work stay at home, work from home um, um, staff members. Mm -hmm. And what Ibotta did was they had these, they, they had boxes. They put my tea cakes in the box and a Starbucks gift card. Yeah. And they mailed them to 500 of their, of their staff members. I've so other people are doing that, that yeah. too. Yeah. They're doing that too. So why can't it be me? Why does it have to be Starbucks? Starbucks gets all the money. Right. Why can't it be me or some other small company? So I'm trying to capitalize on that. And people are going to be working from home for a lot longer than we think. Yeah. You know, people have gotten used to it. Companies are looking at the cost of, of, of square footage of office space. They're looking at what it's costing them to run these big offices. People want to be home now with their kids. Now with homes, homeschooling, right, right. With home with their kids. So I'm really trying to capitalize on, and I'm not even going to call it a trend, yeah. on the new way of doing things. Because I think this is going to last a lot longer than just this year. It's going to be a little while before yeah. we venture back out. And even still, I think people are still going to be wanting to do some of those stay-at-home cocooning kind of things still. Right, so in the winter. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a great idea for businesses as they're trying to, like, rebuild morale and connect people, support local businesses like yourself, <laughs> other other brands that are local, help them. I mean, it's just such a great win-win, win. Exactly. Yeah, all the wins. Um, so, well, that's awesome. I'm really excited for that next step and we'll get your e-commerce e going soon and all that fun stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you have an interesting product that, yeah, it's fresh. I mean, it's a baked product. So it, I mean, the tea cakes have some, some shelf life, I'm sure, but it's hard to do true e-commerce until you get into the kits and things like that. So thank you. I need you to help easier. me with self life and the things. And that's what I mean by like I feel like my business is like a child's in the terrible twos now. Yeah. It's got all these things that it needs me to take care of and it won't be still and it's got, you know, because I do want to I do want to be able to ship. I do want to have it in more places. Um I would love to see my business and my product go nation, you know, nationwide. And I do get asked that. I get emails all the time, do you ship to Ohio? And I'm like, no, I've been to Ohio, but no, <laughs> I don't, not yet. I'm always like, no, not yet. Not yet. So I'm working on, I'm working on, I'm working on getting my email, getting my website to where I can at least do local yeah. e-commerce, where I can get it to other, you know, people can order. Because right now it's very arduous. Yeah. It's not, it's not very um, streamlined. So I'm working to get that more streamlined because then that'll reduce, that will free up some more of my time to do the other things that I need to do, For you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on getting those things that will ease, take away some of the time constraints, give me my time back, and I'm going to put that time on other things. I'm looking at how to delegate more, how, to, how can I get someone else to come in and help me. Yeah. Um, what does that look like? Um, I've been looking at like interns from the various cooking schools. Um, so I'm looking at different things that I can do that will free up some of my time so I can do other things in the business, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's just definitely watching this business grow and it wasn't like it was last year. I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to do the festival, you know, oh, you know, that kind of thing. This year has really stretched my my capacity and my brain and my skills like oh wait a minute i never thought about that oh wow way. i think it's, 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 way. it's in a yeah. good way but it definitely came out of like nowhere i w i definitely wasn't thinking of things that i think now i wasn't thinking about hiring last year yeah i wasn't thinking about 500 packages of tea cakes you know i wasn't thinking some of the things that i'm thinking now and it's because i've had i've had to change i've had to pivot and i've had mm -hmm. to you know, and I, again, like I said, I want to see what can happen if I do all those things, what, wow. what can happen? I think your success is inevitable and your enthusiasm is infectious. And um, we're going to, you're going to be on uh, the panel discussion for yeah. Denver Startup Week. Um, yes. I'm, I'm uh, hosting about food found, uh, founders of color. And it'll be really interesting to talk with you about your experience and how we can make the 
the CPG world, the natural products world more inclusive because we need more people just like you who have, um, have these great ideas and we want to help them bring them, yeah. bring them to life. So we'll talk I'm more about, about that. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. So. I want to, I, I want to be a role model. I want to be someone that people can say, you know, she's look at what she's doing, yeah. which is why I bring women in. Like, you know, you can do this. I even, I had a woman call me the other day. She wanted, um, a cake. I'm like, I don't do cakes, but here are three other women bakers that have companies that do cakes. Right. Right. I'm, like, I'm like, she might call you. She might call you, you know, letting them know this woman called me because I don't do it, but I don't have a problem referring. I definitely mm -hmm. believe in abundance, you know, and sharing the wealth. And so, yeah, right. I def I'm looking forward to the Denver Startup Week. I'm looking forward to being on the panel. I definitely believe in abundance and, and sharing what I know and putting it out there. You know, I, think, I feel like that's something that God has given to me is to share what I know and Maybe you can take it and you can go a step further. You know, you might be the user and maybe you didn't know. I've learned from other women mm -hmm. many things. I bought a scale because woman said, you should buy you a scale. Like, you, you can't eyeball. Like, really? <laughs> you know, I can't do that. She's like, you know, you need to buy you a scale. Oh, yeah. and I bought a scale. Like, oh, I didn't know that. Never thought of, never thought about a scale. Or someone told me to buy a stand mixer. Like, I can't just use, like, buy a stand mixer. It would save you. I bought a stand mix. So people have poured into me. Yeah. And I could pour it back into other women. Like, get a stand mixer. Girl, get a stand mixer. It'll change your world. Change you know? Life. Yeah. Now you're using a big spot, you know, huge, huge. <laughs> yes. The stand mixer huge made mixing. everything oh. better. So much cool. better. Just different tools, learning about different tools that yeah. my friends, Jessica, taught me how to make, I you know, making my pie crust. She's like, make it in the food process and then put it put it in the stand mixer. What? I'm gonna do it by hand. She's like, no, put it in the stand mixer. Yeah, you can't keep doing this stuff by hand. No, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, mean, I never thought about that. You know, well, you watch you watch your mom or somebody else cook. Is everything by hand? Yeah. I'm like, I'm coming up into the new century now. No, I'm not to gonna work. work. <laughs> no, I stand mixer, the food processor. You know the blender i use all of those tools to yeah. save myself some time you know that that my parents my grandmother my mom didn't use got I to use. you're scaling up you're going big I all use, right yeah. well, where can people go find your your sweet boxes where can they find you on social how do they find you how about you well, I'm on Instagram at Miss underscore Peabody's. If you want to place an order, you go to Miss Peabody's, Miss Peabody STC at gmail.com. My website is www.misspeabodies.com. And you can find me at any of any and all of those places, but definitely on this, I'm on Instagram. I love Instagram. I'm also on Facebook, but I personally do the Instagram. Someone else does the Facebook for me, okay. but I love, love Instagram. So you always me on Instagram, maybe even contact me through you. If someone calls you, send them my way. Oh, sure. That type of thing. But yeah, good. Oh, and uh, he's climbing. Yeah, we, I'm tired thinking about how many pies you make. <laughs> okay, sure. You know that's that's Miss Keisha, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get her tea in my boxes. That would be amazing. Right. Tea, yeah, tea I, we yeah. met. We met almost two years ago maybe it was even before then and it's what's so cool about this stuff is that i've met people i met women we were at like ground zero and all of us are doing different things with our bill we used to meet at um at einstein's bagel out here in green valley ranch and talk about our ideas and talk about our stuff and like she's doing big things now you know yeah. um so it's really cool to see how we're all doing different things, but we all started where we all started at, but everybody is doing bigger. Yep. See, I got you. I, we got yeah. I love, I love that. that. I just love how we're all, we're all growing in our own way and we're all doing it in our own way, but we always try to find a way to support each other. And I do, I would love, I don't know how to do it yet. I haven't, we haven't figured it all out yet. But before the end of the year, I'm going to have her tea in my boxes. I don't I know what that's going to look like. I definitely, 
And I've always wanted her. I've always wanted her tea in my tea cakes. Always. So it's just trying to figure out how to do it. How can we do it? And what kind of blend and that type of thing. So yeah, I always. I can't wait either, Keisha, because I know it's just a cool. I love just being able to give back and helping each other. But yeah, we went. We go way back, like a couple of years now, and just note yeah. the paper. I want to do this. I want to do that. And and look at us now, you know? Look at you guys now. It's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time today and um, for making time in your day. And uh, we'll see you soon on Denver Startup Week, which if you're watching this before seven, September 17th, then uh, anybody can go and register if you want to check out that um, the, the Founders of Color panel in the natural products industry. So fun stuff. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you, Sarah. You too. Thank great you job. for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye. Awesome. Well, that was so fun. Um, I'm sure I, Keisha, get ready. We'll have you on this soon too. So, um, Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Please go join the uh, Food Business Success Private Facebook group. Um, I Like I said, I just put up a live video today all about the success equation, which I think Pamela embodies so well and her compelling why and her big goal that is fueling that commitment that I think is the big thing that um, people lack. They say they're committed, but then are you really, really willing to do all of the hard things that it takes? So. Um, go check out the private Facebook group. And then if I can help you in any way, please reach out. Um, I'd love to help you make your food business dream real. All right. Have a great day, guys. Thanks. Bye.